the lesson on today is a question that I would like for you to reflect upon. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? A story is told that one day, John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, was walking with a troubled man who expressed his doubt as to the goodness of God. He said, I do not know what I shall do with this worry and trouble. At the same moment, Wesley saw a cow looking over a stone wall. Do you know, asked Wesley, why that cow is looking over the wall? No, said the man who was worried. Wesley said, the cow is looking over the wall because she cannot see through it. That is what you must do with your wall of trouble. Look over it and avoid it. Faith enables us to get above and look over and avoid what seems so insurmountable to us as we look to Christ who is the author and finisher of our faith. We can say that we too walk by faith and not by sight. For Hebrews 11 and 1 tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What are you hoping for? Is it the will of God? And do you have faith to believe that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that you ask or think if we only trust in the Lord and believe in the Lord's word that God is faithful and true to the promises that he has given you. Where is your faith? The Gospel of Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses 25 through 34, Jesus is found encouraging us through these words. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Or you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not, they do not labor, they do not spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first God's kingdom and righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day, each day has enough trouble of its own. Certainly there are plenty of things that troubles 
our nation, our community, our household. But the Lord tells us that he is well able to give us peace that surpasses all understanding. In the midst of trials, tribulations, in the midst of natural disasters, if we hold on and trust in God to believe that God is yet omnipotent, an all-powerful God, that God is an all-loving God, that God is an all-knowing God. And if we believe that, then we can stand the test of time, then we can have this hope in knowing that God will not leave nor forsake us. Even David said, I once was young, but now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken, neither his seed begging for bread. It is then that we must ask ourselves, where is our faith? Where is your faith? When our solution for our troubles becomes drugs, alcohol, sex, or even suicide. When these things become our dependency to cope with life's troubles, we must have forgotten the purpose of Jesus coming for it is written in John 10 and 10 that Jesus said, I come to give you life and that more abundantly. But understand that Satan's desire is that our lives will not be prosperous. That in John 10 and 10 it says that the enemy seeks to steal, kill, and to destroy. But for those who trust and believe and hold on by faith to the Lord, remember the promise of God is to give us life, to give us hope, to give us an expected end, not to harm us, but that we can look to the Lord to be the one that will help us in times of trouble, for the scripture tells us that in my time of trouble, that we can look to the hill from whence cometh our help, and our help comes from the Lord. This is not to say that as believers, we won't experience hardship, but we are not like those who have no hope because our hope is in Christ. Jesus says he was with the disciples while in the midst of the storm and he slept on the hinder end of the ship. As the waters began to beat against the boat and the winds began to blow, the disciples wondered Carest thou not, master, that we perish? But what they failed to recognize as Jesus slept, that Jesus knew all along the power that he had within him. And as Jesus woke, he spoke to the raging winds and the storm and said, Peace, be still. Peace, be still. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? And this is what Jesus is saying to your situation on today, my friends. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. Let us pray. Dear 
Lord. We come humbly before your presence, surrendering all of who we are, our lives, our hearts, our minds, and our soul. We surrender to your will. For when we cannot understand things that are going on around us and in our world and in our own lives, we know, Lord, that you are yet in control. And so just as you have exhorted us in this gospel reading on today, let us be encouraged in knowing that we do not have to worry when we put our trust in you, Lord, for you are faithful, you are faithful, and you are well able to bring peace to our lives that surpasses all understanding. And so on today, let us continue to walk by faith and live in peace. In Jesus' name, we pray. May the grace of the Lord be with you. Amen. And God bless you, my brother and my sister in the Lord. Now be with us next time for another lesson. This has been Word Vision Network.